Hi, everybody. My name is Vladimir Frazal. I'm your AWS Principal Solutions Architect. So I was attending a conference the other day and a customer came to me with a question that I think it's quite interesting and represents, you know, a, a very common use case around my customers, right? I've been hearing questions, similar questions like this, especially considering all the news that are coming out recently around AI and generative AI and, and large language models, right? So the question was, can I use my documents to create a solution based on generative AI and large language models so that it can, you know, have all of those PDFs, files, all of those PowerPoints, reports, memos, work, uh, Word documents, things like that, that uh, my company has been creating for the last few decades. So the question was, can I use those documents and create a solution that will consider all of that and ingest all of that? So the answer is yes. And that's what I'll show you today. Okay, so this is a generic demo that I'll do to you today for informational purpose only. I'm showing the art of the possible, right? It's not an actual prototype or a working version. So what I did here was, I was on OSDU conference, so the question was around OSDU. If you don't know what OSDU is, I would suggest that you go to osduforum.org and take a look. It's a fantastic initiative. There's a lot of innovation going on there in and around OSDU. And also, of course, AWS has OSDU data platform running on AWS. So if you're interested, I'll post the link in the comment section of this video, right? And you can take a look by yourself. But let's show the demo, right? So the demo that I'm, um, I have for you today, it's based on Kendra, Amazon Kendra with Anthropic. So I'll break down how I did this uh, in the following minutes, right? But let's, act, uh, let's ask a question, right? What is OSDU? And let's see what this uh, solution will say, right? So it's searching right now and, and we're consulting the large language model. So it says OSU stands for Open Sub Subsurface Data Universe, elaborates a lot on what it is. The OSU form is a community of members and it, it's very a very nice dialogue. I hope this helped provide more context and it cites the sources. So you can see here that it's pointing to osuforum.org, right? So this is really cool. Um, let's ask another question. What is its vision? What is its vision? And note that I'm not saying that I'm asking about OSU at this time. I'm just asking what is its vision? And it's saying a pretty good answer. It understood that, you know, the context of what I'm talking about is OSU. So it seems it says that based on the documents, the vision of OSU appears to be. So this is uh, really a pretty decent uh, answer. And again, it's citing uh, the sources, right? So besides ingesting OSDU data, which is all public information, I also took some articles and I, I ingested some articles here. So let's ask a, a more uh, oil and gas uh, energy related kind of question, right? What is the premium basin? So let's see what uh, the solution with the large language, large language model will answer. So waiting a few seconds. Um, I have a very small instance of everything. I'll show you all uh, what I'm doing. Uh, but uh, yeah, the premium basin is one of the most prolific oil and gas producing bases in the USA. And it gives, again, a very decent uh, answer. It gives the sources, right? So let me ask another question. What is, tell me, let me ask, tell me about the premium basin lithology. I hope that's how it's spelled, lithology. So I'm a... IT person, I'm not a geoscientist or I'm not a, 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 a seismic engineer or nothing like that, right? Uh, so forgive me if I'm writing something wrong, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it gave me a very nice answer. Based on the documents, the lithology of the pyramid base includes uh, plastic sediments, shales, and carbonates. And this is, uh, represents uh, very much and shows the art of the possible that yes, you can ingest your own documents. So imagine the possibilities. If you take all of those documents, right, uh, all of the PowerPoints that you have, PDFs, all of those memos, reports, uh, all of that, that are private and just into this solution. Uh, you imagine the possibilities, right? And it's always pointing to the source. So this works more uh, kind of a, like an index, and I'll show the architecture uh, in the following seconds in minutes to you all how it works, right? But it's not duplicating the information and I can get into details, right? So the way I'm doing this, and now I'm, I'm going to jump into a little bit more of the technical considerations for how I did this. So let's, let's deep dive a little bit. So 
there's a, a blog that explains how I did this. Uh, sorry about that. So yeah, how to build high accuracy generative AI applications using Kendra, Langchain, and large language models. So large language models are very powerful, extremely powerful. However, they uh, are trained in uh, public information and generic domain information. It's not, you know, there are several cases where the domain specific information we're looking for might not be inside of those models, which is the case, you know, for your documents that you have internally. For sure, those documents are not uh, and are not part of the generative AI models, right? So the way to do this, there are many ways to do this. You can work with prompt engineering. There are many uh, courses out there on prompt engineering. Uh, you can add files to your prompt, or you can do something the way I did here, which is basically to have a knowledge base where the user asks a question, the application will consult or search that knowledge base. In this case, I'm using Kendra. We'll return the, uh, the meaningful answers, the meaningful uh, text uh, excerpt uh, to the large language model. And then the large language model will format the answer and send it back to the user. So that's the workflow. Long story short, um, I have an application that will search an index and uh, uh, send that to the large language model and get the answer. So what I'm using here for this demo is, you know, uh, a foundation model called uh, Anthropic. So uh, Amazon has an offering called Amazon Bedrock. Take a look at what that is. It's a fantastic, easy way to build uh, generative AI applications using foundational models. So it's a fully managed service that, you know, makes using those models really easy. Uh, you can build test generation, chatbots, search, summarization, image generation, personalization. So take a look, there are many different models here. Uh, and the one that I'm using is called Anthropic, right? So that's one of them. I'm also using Kendra, Amazon Kendra. It's an enterprise search, intelligent enterprise search powered by machine learning. So if you look back and let me go back to that picture real quick. If you look back to, yes, here, I'm sorry, to this, diagram, you see that, you know, I'm using Amazon Kendra and Kendra is the index that will return the, the meaningful text to be formatted on an answer by the large language model, right? So Kendra, uh, it does many things, including crawling a website and indexing documents on an S3 repository and many other data sources, right? So I suggest you take a look at this, how I did. I'm also using a couple more components here. I'm using Langchain, which is a framework uh, to develop applications uh, powered by uh, uh, language models. This makes life so easy. Uh, if you've been around for you know some time, like I have been, uh, uh, you are probably familiar with much harder uh, languages and way of developing applications. And this makes things so easy to use, uh, uh, develop applications powered by large language models. And one last component is Streamlit. I'm using Streamlit to create the, the web application. It's based on Python, Obidy Python. So it makes my life really easy and you can make this prototype really easy, right? So, so that's all, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, my name is Vladimir Frazal. You can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter and uh, some other uh, places, right? So, uh, and I hope uh, this was uh, helpful to you. So I'll, I'll record another video soon with other demos. I'll also post all the links to everything that I've done here so that you can take a look and go deep. And uh, that's all I had for today. So thank you very much for your time and talk to you soon.